Well, good afternoon and welcome to this special Island Stack Sports Talk. I'm your host, Earl Biss, and I'm joined by the Bermuda men's national coach, Jamie Barnwell, for rugby. Uh, Jamie, yesterday uh, it was announced that the Rugby Americas North will host the Sevens qualifiers. Now, the interesting part about these qualifiers, it's actually for two events, uh, two major sporting events. Obviously, one is the Rugby World Cup Sevens in, uh, later this year in South Africa. That's September. But prior to that, it's the Commonwealth Games qualifier that will take place in July. Uh, Bermuda has a shot at, at, at making it both of these events. Um, we came up just a bit shy last year in the sevens tournament. Um, but how, how do you, how do you look at the chances this time around with that experience under our belt? As you said, experience is, experience is everything. Um, at that point in time, uh, that was, um, it was, it was, it was pretty much a, a new team. They were old faces and experienced faces, but you know, uh, you know, the, the, we're after a team experience. We need, uh, for me, a successful seven team is a, is a is a twelve the twelve that you send. So you know, fifty percent of that we're either coming back into playing sevens again or we're new selections. So yeah, that that experience in Turks and Caicos, I think, has allowed us to really see where we're at. And let's be honest, we're in the conversation, we hung on in there with. Mexico, a team that has played on the World Seven circuit and with two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock, we're in the lead, you know. Um, and I think that we, from that, we've looked at ourselves and we reflected that really it wasn't necessarily Mexico that won the game, it was really us that lost the game. And that, that's, that's some key takeaways and learnings. And, you know, we're big enough, we're a big enough team, we've got big enough individuals that can reflect that player bank focus. Um, you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot about the side there. The first time we put out that group of players and seeing how, how they operate. And, you know, we've able to come away from that. And, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the processes we've put in forward in planning for this next one. So let's just say we're in the conversation, but I don't think this team are ever going to go to something like that and, and, and not want to compete and, you know, win it. It's a, our best support to try and win it. Sure, sure. Now, is it the the top two go to both events, or how how have they uh, said this this these two qualifiers in one tournament work? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it seemingly changes a little bit, Earl. If I'm being deadly honest, from my understanding, current it was the top two. My understanding at this point in time is winner takes all. So you've got to to, to go to the Commonwealth Games. You've got to finish first, and to. to get through to be a contender for World Cup qualification, you, you, you've got to be number one. There is no no space for number two. Oh, man. That's, that's what I'm hearing at the minute. What makes our challenge even more difficult, I guess, to some extent, is we've also got Canada in this draw, which we didn't have before. Right. Um, you know, really, you know, Mexico, Jamaica, uh, you know, they're the two we've, we've really been looking to chase. Uh, mm -hmm try and make some ground up on um, and you know it takes time but they're certainly I would certainly say that they're probably favourites based on their results and past experiences uh, but then we've got Canada coming in who haven't managed to qualify in other tournaments now they're a whole uh, different kettle of fish you know uh, very professional outfit full pay, full time paid athletes um, but the wonderful thing about Sevens Earl is you never know <laughs> on the day it gets right um, and, um, you know, we've got an eight-week period now that we can really bolt on and add to the things, that, the game that we want to play. And um, the players are right behind it. We're really excited by this one. Everybody yeah. is. We've been, we've been playing a lot of 15s over the weekends. Um, how does this set you up in preparation uh, for this event? Uh, because it is a sevens it's a, and it's a lot different. Um, so so how, how does... How does how do you hope the league structure helps you out a little bit in, in getting some of these players, some sevens, real life game action as opposed to just training? Yeah, sometimes, you know, my experience of sevens and fifteens, there can be some there's some negative crossover that happens uh, with fifteens and sevens. Uh, you know, fifteens is very much played on the game line. You're trying to get across the game line very quickly. Uh, sevens, 
you know, requires a little bit more depth off the ball. So sometimes when you're crossing between two, you can get your depth slightly wrong, you get your timing slightly off. But strangely enough, I think this works for us um, because a lot of our guys just haven't played. You know, our national team is very, our sevens team is very lucky to have played during kind of COVID and mm -hmm. away. But um, but even then, it's not a lot of game time for them. So, you know, I think the league, I think, will help with fitness, match fitness, and also just, just playing and perhaps some sharpening of some skills in there. Decision-making is key. It takes a bit of time to get back decision-making. So playing games is a good thing. Um, so I, I'm happy. You, know, you, you can never... You can never 100% absolutely so, but, but I'm, I, I, I see positives from it. And we've, sure. we've, we've catered it, we've, we've put it as part of our kind of training and our understanding. So we don't want to burn out the players. You know, don't play those games. It's a short season. Um, right. Yeah. Sure. Now, th these type of tournaments, uh, two days, it's kind of cruel on the body, isn't it? Because you're playing such high intensity games for a short period of time. You got a bit of a break, but then you're back at that intensity again. And, and, it, and it, with a bit of luck, no injuries and so forth. But it's a bit cruel on the body, isn't it? Oh, it's a physically demanding sport, rugby seven. One of the most brutal. Um, and one that, um, you know, I'm just so, I'm so impressed by the playing squad. And that's also the extended playing squad. There's some guys in there who aren't going to this one, um, who were in the last one. Um, you know, just... Yeah, it is. It's brutal on the body. So they have, they've got to train. You know, these guys. Um, you know, we, we fundamentally, you know, we, we operate with two strength conditioning sessions a week. Um, we're getting help from um, the guys over at the uh, the national stadium on the track at the moment for the first four or five weeks. They're running us through our paces um, with something uh, with with, a, with running sessions on a Wednesday. But we double up our sessions. We have three pitch sessions, two strength conditioning. Which for you know for fundamentally still amateur players it's it's uh, it's a lot it's a lot of commitment especially when they've got families and you know other priorities so I'm I'm so impressed by the work ethic and, and mm. what they do with it. yeah when when can we possibly see the final team selected for this as I know there'll be a lot of people interested in in, in who makes this selected team yeah well I mean I think um, I, we. I'm, I'm hoping that um, they'll, they'll go with a 13-man selection on this one, like they did last time. I think that would be wise, given still that you know COVID still existing as well, so things can ha happen even when you're travelling and, and getting there. Um, but I think that makes sense. Um, they haven't they haven't announced that yet, so I'll just keep my eye on that. But um, fundamentally, will the, the, the squad will know would, would be kind of with two weeks to the tournament, they'll they'll know who's going. Mm. And obviously, what you're putting is in the, the final touches on, on this squad. How do you feel about the, the team? I, I know you said the last time you were really impressed with um, how how the team gelled with the with the uh, experience and those young people coming in. But uh, this time around, how are you feeling about the, the possibilities of, of of a strong strong team bidding for a spot in the Commonwealth Games and for that matter? the rugby sevens world cup yeah i think i think uh, every every squad that we've put together has i think we always put in a strong squad there's you know i've almost become i think i think at the moment where we've set ourselves up you almost i, I don't think i can ever play the good guy with selection i think i'm always going to be the bad guy a little bit um you know, but the wonderful thing is we, we have different players. We've got a we've got a group of players that we're working with. People are coming in all the time. They're looking, you know, and it's about trying to bring them in at the right areas as well, so we can get some experience in there. You know, we don't want to be in a position where we kind of, you know, haven't haven't uh, we don't want to drop somebody in it, and we certainly aren't in that position. We've got uh, we've got so many players coming to this squad. I mean, you know, we've got. Uh, Antonio Perrin, chief leader, has come into the squad that wasn't here before. Probably one of the most gifted um, and natural sevens players with the ball in hand. He can certainly turn defence inside out on his own. Um, we've got a young lad called Jaki, uh, who's, who's Jaki you know, Simons, who's been playing part of national 15s and he's been involved in some seven programmes. Still very young, uh, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Chris Mugulitz coming in, uh, Boise's coming back in from a really bad knee injury. Uh, a few years ago, yeah, he was one of the biggest threats uh, on our, you know, on a sevens field. Uh, Jack uh, Hadley, um, 
fantastic player, grew up in England playing his rugby, uh, Bermudan lad, but this guy on his day, if we can get him fit, he's going to be uh, and that's causing real issues. Another guy called Desiree Gill, very young guy, promising. And of course, Tom Healy, who's the most experienced player that we have in Bermuda, didn't, got injured just before last time, so he's coming back in. So, the, you know, the squad is, uh, there's lots of new players that have, have come in from last time. Um, yeah, it's always very exciting, so the squad selection. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's past becoming the bad guy because the, the, the player pool is, is uh, you know, we're very lucky to have the, the strength and depth that we have. Sure, sure, sure. Well, as we get closer, we'll get back with you to find out how things are, are working out for this particular squad in preparation for these two major events uh, in one event. Um, and uh, we want to wish you all the best in, in preparing the Bermuda team uh, for these qualifiers. Uh, which will take place in Bahamas, uh, April, I believe it's the, I'm sorry, is it April? Yeah, April 23rd and 24th. So uh, eight weeks time, uh, the the spot for the Commonwealth Games first is up for grabs. And then, of course, for the World Cup 7. So good luck. Uh, we'll be in touch. And, uh, you know, just to keep you um, keep people informed on what's going on with the national team, the national rugby team that will see action as well. So, excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Always a pleasure to chat. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Take care. Bye bye.